Hey everybody, welcome to Vintage Variety. Today I'm gonna to share my morning jewelry with you and I'm also gonna show you some pieces that are really unusual and that I just can't figure out and maybe some of you guys will have an idea about some of these pieces. There are a few pieces in here that you've probably seen before and some of them that you haven't. So let's get started. First, I'm gonna show you some of the odd pieces in my collection. Um, here's a piece I don't know much about. This could be modern or maybe it's not modern. It looks like something someone has made. This is made out of cloth. And someone put a lot of work into this. It's glued on to this piece here. Let's see if I can, or sewed on rather. And they've, this looks like, um, this is filigree and they have made this these little um, velvet flowers and they've sewn this on there. Isn't that unusual? And this is the chain for the piece. You can see the chain has little pieces of filigree in it. And this is the clasp and this is why I say someone has made this out of bits and pieces because you can see it has a lobster claw clasp on it. But I just wanted to show you guys this. This is just a really odd unusual little necklace no idea what it was if it symbolized something or if it was just someone's craft project and here's another one and this could be fairly modern it has a spring ring clasp but looking at it i think it's modern and this came in a lot and i just thought this was a really interesting piece of jewelry but it's black and because I'm showing morning jewelry, I'm gonna include a few pieces that are black or have black on them. Now look at this little Victorian spider. As you can see, one of his legs is broken and it's done out of, I believe this is probably made out of a brass. Look at him, isn't he something else? I'll show you the back, it does have the C clasp. He's just a really odd looking little guy, isn't he? These are glass stones. Doesn't want to stand up very well, but it's just a really unusual little piece of jewelry. I'm glad that he's part of my collection. And a lot of Victorian jewelry had little bugs and figurals and things like that. Here's a piece. Maybe some of you guys will know what this is. It says Frogner. And I have no idea what this means. If you turn it over, it has a very old C clasp and a tube hinge. It does have a marking on the back. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. 925, so this is silver. And it is enamel. Give you guys a really close look of, look of this. I don't know what this is, guys. If you guys have any idea, let me know in the comments. Here's some sweet little brooches I wanted to show. These look like they're made out of a clay or leave a ceramic. I'll show you the back of them. I did test these, so these are sterling. There's the funny looking clasp on the back of this one. And they look almost like they were handmade. I believe they were. They have little flowers on them. They look like they were molded out of the same ceramic material. I have a blue one. Show you the back of this one. And then I have this pink colored one. But aren't those interesting? I think they are. I don't know how old they are. Um, because they do look handmade. But I think those are really neat. Another really old piece. This is carved bone. I'm pretty sure it's probably bovine bone. It's not plastic. Um, it has no smell. So I'm pretty sure it's bone. And it looks like they've 
carved this flower into this and then it's kind of burnt around the edges or maybe they've lacquered it, I don't know, but I think this is a really unusual little pendant that I wanted to show you guys. Isn't that neat? Now I wanna show you guys this. I don't know what this thing is. It is weird. Um, and I'm wondering if someone made this out of bits and pieces. When I saw this, my first thought was Art Deco because it is kind of geometric as a lot of Art Deco pieces are. You can see that that's sandwiched between this and this and they have put some kind of a, I don't know if it's a glue or what in there. The back of this is perforated. It's got all these little holes and it kind of reminds me of a lot of the old Haskell jewelry. Um, it would be like this and then they would wire things onto it. But I don't know, I don't know about this thing. These edges, I don't usually wear this because these edges are really sharp. I feel like you could put somebody's eye out with it. But this is just a really weird piece of jewelry. If, you know, I think that it's something somebody has made put together from other parts and components. But if you guys have any idea what this is, please let me know in the comments. Now I'm gonna show you some pieces of jewelry. And some of them are morning jewelry. Some of them I think could have been worn as morning jewelry. And some of them I'm just really not sure, but I'm gonna share these pieces with you guys today. The first piece I'm gonna show you is a revival piece. This is, this looks very old, but it's not. I'm gonna flip it over so you guys can see the signature on the back. It is vintage. It says Speaks on the back. And this is a piece of Victorian Revival. And this looks a lot like Victorian morning jewelry would have looked. Um, they used a lot of black lacquer. They used a lot of black stones. Um, a lot of morning jewelry would have pearls in it um, to signify purity. White enameled morning jewelry was used for unwed women and children that had passed away, and that signified their purity. So I think this is a really neat piece. I would call this Victorian Revival, and I would say that it was mimicking um, a piece of morning jewelry. Morning jewelry often is referred to as memento mori, meaning remember death. And I've always wondered about this, I think that part of it is to remind people to live a really good moral life, or a moral life, I guess is the right phrase for that. And I think another part of it would be to remind us that we don't live forever. Morning jewelry has been around since the Middle Ages, but it reached its height of popularity during Queen Victoria's era. When Prince Albert passed away in 1861, Queen Victoria went into mourning and she wore black crepe and morning jewelry for the remainder of her life. Because she was a popular figure, people really wanted to emulate her. And so morning jewelry became vastly popular during the Victorian era. Now, morning jewelry, I mentioned before, was made out of a lot of different materials. It was made out of black glass, jet, onyx, Pearls were used, dark tortoise shell, black enamel, bog oak, gutta percha, and vulcanite were all used. Here's an example, and are these antique? I don't know. These are made out of black glass. I do think they're very old. I'll show you the clasp on these. And look how shiny these are. Would have been referred to as French jet which was a black glass. And this is just a little black beaded necklace. French jet was popular during the Victorian era because it was used in a lot of morning jewelry. As I mentioned before, French jet is just a fancy word for black glass. And this came about in imitation of real jet. Um, a lot of people say Whitby Jet. Whitby Jet is a real 
gemstone because it was so popular during the Victorian era to be used in Victorian jewelry. Not only did it become scarce, but it also became very expensive. So this was another option to use French jet, which was black glass. Now I'm gonna show you this piece. I'm gonna show you the back first. It has a C clasp. It has a very long pin. I believe that this piece is probably a vulcanite. And this is just a brooch. Here's another piece, and as you can see, this one's damaged. Turn it over, let you guys see that. So they did have a lot of materials that they used, like early plastics, um, which would have been bog oak, gutta percha, and vulcanite. So I do want to talk a little bit about the materials. One material that was used was bog oak. Bog, bog oak is a fossilized wood or peat, and it is usually found in Ireland. It is very dark. It is a brownish black color. It has a woody texture. Another material that was used would also have been horn, which would have come from an animal, and it would have been pressed into a mold to form jewelry. Gutta percha was a thermoplastic. It was a type of latex that was made from certain Malaysian trees. Vulcanite is a type of rubber and it's formed by combining sulfur and rubber and then heating the mixture. Vulcanite can be a lot of different colors and dark pieces were used for Victorian jewelry and mainly mourning jewelry. I did mention enameling, and here are some pieces. And again, I do not know if these were worn as mourning pieces, but here are some pieces with some black enameling, and I'm showing these as an example. Um, this one's celestial, and you can see that it has the black in it, has a C clasp. And then here's another piece. Again, you see the black enameling. So this was something that was really popular during the Victorian era were these pieces with the black enameling. This one has a tube hinge and a C clasp. And these have been tested. These are all gold filled. This one has a little pearl. This is a real pearl has the buckle motif and it also has the black enameling. Um, you can see the little tag on here it says this is a ruby. Now a lot of times lockets were worn. Lockets are still worn today and this is a very old locket. This one is nine karat gold. I'm gonna show you the photos on the inside of this. And they're fading and it's hard to see, but this one is a woman. Let's zoom in on this so you guys can get a really good look at it. I believe it's a woman, it could be a man. Looks like a woman to me. And this one is, the, this one's really faded, but this one's a child. So this could have been something that was just worn. Um, because these were loved ones, or it could have been worn as a piece of mourning jewelry. The maker of the locket. You guys see the details on this? And I've kept this exactly as it is. I haven't tried to take the pictures out or done anything to it because this meant something to someone and because of that, I want to respect it. 
Here is another piece that is made out of glass, and I do not think this is antique, but rather it's vintage. All of these little glass pieces are set. Show you the back. It has a modern clasp. It's a very well-made brooch, but I wanted to show this as an example of what would have been worn during the Victorian era, they would have worn something like this to signify mourning. Now these last three pieces that I'm gonna show you are really interesting and contain hair. Mourning jewelry was also made of hair. This is often referred to as hair work. Hair is somewhat imperishable, so it was used to symbolize immortality. Victorians believed that hair contained something of a person's essence. Hair was used to make memorial wreaths, braided watch chains and necklaces. Woven hair was used for necklaces, earrings, and bracelets. Small braids were used in rings, and even miniature scenes were created using hair. Now, this was often done with hair from loved ones. However, the trend of hair jewelry became so popular that by the mid-1800s, England was importing 50 tons of hair a year to keep up with the demand for hair jewelry. Now, these are not the only pieces containing hair that I've ever owned. I did own a piece years ago that I wish I would have kept. It was a locket. Um, it was pinchbeck, I believe is how you say it and it did contain hair in it, and I did not keep that piece. Since then, I have thoroughly regretted not keeping it, but I'm gonna show you this one first. This one was a brooch. Um, you can see the pin and the hinge and everything is broken off of this one. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can get a really good look at this, though. This is all Let's see if I can get the glare off of that. This is all hair. Is that not amazing? It's supposed to look like, I guess, some kind of a plant. This looks like little pieces of wheat. But all of this is made out of hair. So this is an example of hair being used to have made a miniature scene has the little pearls. Pearls were often used, as I mentioned earlier. Isn't that something else? Here's another one, and I recently showed this in a video where I tested it for gold content. You can see the enameling on this side, and on this side it has worn off. So it does have a little bit of damage. I don't know if anything would have been here originally, and it's just faded out. Maybe it would have had a photo, and over time, it's just disintegrated. But I'm gonna flip this around, and I'm gonna let you see the hair work on this piece. So that is hair. Now, I'm not sure how they did that. I'm sure that somebody out there knows show you the clasp. It has a C clasp and a tube hinge. And they've done the hair and it just looks like little lines. So if you run across something that looks like this, you know that, it, that it, this is actually human hair. Now this next piece I'm gonna show you guys is probably one of the weirdest pieces of jewelry that I own. And I think it fits into both categories as morning jewelry and just plain out weird. Um, I do need to store this in a box. I did have it in my room displayed, but I don't think that's a good idea because you can see we've got some pieces falling off. It's very old. First thing I'm gonna show you is the cameo on this piece. Now, I believe someone made this piece, but this is a glass cameo, entirely black. And I haven't cleaned this. I have left this the way it was when I got it. 
Um, it looks like she might have had a little stone here, a pearl or something like that, and it's gone. It's been lost over time. There's a chip out of it. I'm gonna flip this over. Now this Cameo, it's just attached. It has a very old C clasp, and it's attached to this kind of little corsage. But what I really want you to see on the back of this is the hair. So someone has taken and they have very carefully wrapped all of this in hair. Um, you can see right here where some of it's come loose. This is a wire, a very old wire, and they've just wrapped it with someone's hair. And then these other pieces they've sewn on. We've got these little plastic pieces. And it really does need to be cleaned, guys, but I wouldn't want to take the chance of destroying it. And then these little pieces here, they look like they're made out of some kind of, I guess, material like you would use for weaving a basket. Again, I hate showing you guys something that's absolutely filthy, but if I were to try to clean this piece, you can see we've got a piece that's falling off right here. It would probably destroy it. Let's see if I can zoom in at the bottom. You can see where some of the hair is starting to unravel. And these little strands of hair have been twisted and twisted together. And some of you are thinking, oh, that can't be hair. It is hair, believe me. So they've took these little strands and they've twisted them and twisted them to make some kind of a rope. And then they've just wrapped this wire with it. So this is a very old and very interesting piece of Memento Mori. I don't have a huge collection of morning jewelry. It's something that is highly collectible and sought after. A lot of it is in museums and there are people out there that that's all they collect is morning jewelry. And the pieces go for quite a bit of money. So these are the few small pieces in my collection that I wanted to share with you guys today. I wanna to thank you guys for watching. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on more videos about collecting vintage and antique items. Thank you again for watching and have a wonderful day.